If you're serious about training and tired of hitting plateaus, then you need to know about periodization. Whether you're lifting for strength, running a 5K, or just looking to stay fit, the structured approach of periodization can make a big difference. Today, we're gonna break down periodization and how you can use it to maximize your gains and avoid frustrating plateaus. Here's what you can expect in today's video. First, we'll break down exactly what periodization is and why it's essential for getting results. Then we'll cover the three pillars of periodization so you know how to structure your training over time. Next, we'll show you how to adapt periodization to your busy life with one of my favorite weekly plans, including strength, power, and hypertrophy days. Finally, I'll show you how to put it all into practice, set clear goals, track your progress, and make adjustments as needed. All right, let's go and dive into it. So what is periodization? In simple terms, it's a structured approach to training that breaks down your year into phases, each with specific goals. It's more than just working out, it's structured training with a purpose. And this is important because by rotating between different types of training, you avoid plateaus, keep your energy and motivation high, and make progress towards your long-term goals, whether that's strength, endurance, or overall fitness. Now the thing is, periodization isn't new. It actually started in the 1960s in Russia and helped the Soviet Union absolutely dominate the Olympics for years. The idea was simple but powerful. Break down the training year into phases that allow athletes to peak at just the right time. It was so effective that it's still the backbone of many top athletes training today. Okay, but before we understand how to best implement periodization into our training, we need to know a couple of important terms. First is a micro cycle. This is your weekly training plan or your typical training week. So when a lot of people think about their typical training week or their training routine, they're talking about a micro cycle. But to really take advantage of all the benefits of periodization, we need to go beyond just the micro cycle. A meso cycle is a block of training, usually lasting between four to six weeks. It's common to have mesocycles focused on specific goals like hypertrophy, strength, or power. In fact, the traditional periodization approach involves progressing primarily from hypertrophy-based training in the off-season to strength and then to power-focused training closer to competition. This can be a really great approach for competitive athletes to peak at the right time for a sports season, but it's actually not what I recommend for everyday athletes. Later on, we'll talk about another approach to mesocycles that I think works best for the everyday athlete. Lastly though, you need to know about a macro cycle, which is your big picture plan. Think of this as your year long roadmap of what you want to accomplish. Definitely don't overlook this. It's really important to have those long-term goals. If you compete in endurance races like me, then you might have an A race or a B race on your plan. Or it might be more simple than that. If you like to run more in the summer and you like to hit strength PRs in the winter, that could be part of your macro cycle plan. A simple example of a macro cycle plan would be something like this, where we have different strength and endurance goals that change throughout the year. Here's exactly what our macro cycle looks like for our hybrid athletes. We're typically working towards hitting one strength PR and one endurance PR each month. That's definitely the goal, but sometimes it does take a few months of training and testing to hit each PR. That's why we often program three months of testing for the same PR. If you wanna hit both strength and endurance PRs, then I invite you to join our hybrid athlete team. Once you sign up for the free seven day trial, your hybrid athlete workouts will be available in your calendar on the Train Heroic app, so that way you know exactly what to do when you get to the gym. Okay, so now that we know some of the basic terms, we can move on to discuss how to apply periodization to the everyday athlete. Now, if you're thinking, I don't have time to train like a professional athlete, don't worry. Structuring training with periodization actually saves you time by directing your training to what will actually provide you the best results. The approach I recommend for everyday athletes is called undulating periodization. This was first introduced by a brilliant strength coach, the late great Charles Polquin. He introduced this nonlinear approach to solve a lot of the problems of traditional periodization. Rather than the traditional or linear periodization approach involving mesocycles focused on one specific quality, like hypertrophy, strength, and then power, the undulating periodization approach involves more frequent variations in training volume and load. This can help give the neuromuscular system more frequent periods of recovery. So for example, rather than having four or eight weeks focused on strength and then four or eight weeks focused on power, you might have variability to have both strength and power sessions within the same training block. The daily undulating approach is by far the most common approach to undulating periodization and it involves having different focuses each day. For example, a strength day, a power day, 
and a hypertrophy day. This variability, again, can help the neuromuscular system recover better, and it can also help you prevent detraining that often occurs when you focus on one thing for eight weeks, and then you completely forget about it and focus on something else for eight weeks. If you're learning something, then make sure you hit the like button and subscribe, as it really helps our channel grow and continue to make better videos each week. A lot of coaches have used this undulating approach to get their athletes great results. So how can you use it to maximize your gains as an everyday athlete? Well, I'm gonna share with you my favorite approach to undulating periodization, which involves training multiple qualities within the same week, specifically using Monday as a power day, focusing on explosive exercises. This would involve relatively low volume, for example, five sets of two, six sets of three, or four sets of four with powerful explosive movements. Think about plyometrics, med ball throws, Olympic lifts, and even traditional barbell lifts, but done with sub-maximal weight so that way you can really drive high intent and high bar speed. This power day focuses on exercises that improve speed and athleticism. And I like doing this on Monday when you're really fresh because typically to make those speed and power adaptations, you need to be near maximal in terms of the speed and the intent and the execution of the movement. And also because it's a power day and you're not pushing to a ton of fatigue and burning yourself out, you'll still be fresh by Wednesday when you move on to your strength day. This is where you go really heavy with low reps. So here's where you can push heavy loads that for example will help you break your one rep max, three rep max, or five rep max PRs on the lifts that you wanna work on. I program a lot of big compound movements like squats and deadlifts and overhead presses and rows for things like four by four, five by five, three by six, or other sets and rep ranges like that. I find that Wednesday is really the perfect time for the strength day. And then Friday can be your hypertrophy day, targeting muscle growth with relatively higher reps. I often program three to four sets in the six to 12 rep range here. Doing this on Friday, you'll typically be the most fatigued from a hard training week, but I find that hypertrophy and conditioning work both tend to be pretty effective, even if you're more fatigued. Overall though, I think this approach with varied neuromuscular stimulus throughout the week gives you a really good opportunity to put out high effort on three different days, week in and week out. If by contrast, you were doing three to four months of just strength sessions and every session was really heavy loads, I find that a lot of people get burnt out more easily and their body breaks down more easily. This can be for a lot of reasons, but physiologically, when you just put a lot of load on your system every single session, you tend to get a lot of spinal stiffness, a lot of people lose hip internal rotation as well as shoulder external rotation, and your aerobic conditioning and your athleticism tend to go down. So unless your goal really is to only build strength, a lot of people end up losing motivation when they're neglecting other aspects of fitness that they actually care about, like vertical jump, endurance, or hypertrophy. Okay, now you might be wondering, what does an actual full training week look like with this type of training? So let's go ahead and break down a full week from our hybrid athlete program. And I think this is a good representation of undulating periodization for the everyday athlete. So let's go ahead and break down our Monday session. Here we typically start with both plyometrics and speed work. So after a simple five minute aerobic warm up to get the heart rate going, we're gonna go into something like split pogo hops and bounding. I typically like to combine a vertical plyometric with a horizontal plyometric so that we get a little bit of both. And there are obviously a lot of different ways you can do that. From there, we're going on to some speed work focusing on 30 yard sprints. I will say I typically for the everyday athlete keep sprinting to about 30 yards or less. That's because realistically you get all the benefits of the fast intense actions of sprinting without the same risk that you get with doing really long sprints of 60 to 100 yards. This isn't to say that 60 to 100 yard sprints are bad, it's just that if that's not your primary training goal, there's just a higher risk of hamstring strain and you can get a lot from just focusing on accelerations. So generally speaking, that's where I like to focus. From there, just moving on to some deep split jumps to get some elasticity in a really deep position. After that, we have our big main superset here between four sets of four trap bar deadlift and an alternating pogo hop to vertical jump, basically a low jump to a high jump. I like really focusing on speed for this trap bar deadlift. That doesn't mean we're moving a light weight, but rather a moderate to heavy weight that we can still move quickly. And then to wrap up the session, we have dumbbell reverse lunges, heel elevated goblet squats, and some sled push for a little bit of conditioning. Moving on to the Wednesday session, this is a lot more strength focused, and we're gonna see back squats and heavy walkout holds. This was a specific part of the program where we're working on hitting that one rep max back squat PR. So you can see this is a test week. I like to do those three months in a row, so that way, even if you don't hit your PR the first month or even the second month, you still have the opportunity one more time. And for a lot of people, if they do hit a PR in the first month, they can build on that for two more months. After that, we just have a bench press with bands, 
lock pulls, cable face pulls. And then if you do have access to a belt squat, you can work that in, or there are some alternatives there for the finisher. Also a little bit of adductor work with the Copenhagen plank. And then moving on to Friday, you can see this is our hypertrophy day with the highest sets and reps, starting with three sets of eight front squat. From there, moving on to some weighted eccentric pull-ups. These are hard, so just two sets of seven there. And if you were doing this program during this phase, you know how tough these were. From there, we just go to a hinge movement and a shoulder press. And then we have a superset to end it with leg extensions and hip abduction slash adduction. So I wanted to give you guys a full week breakdown, but I do wanna emphasize that you can definitely tweak this to your own needs. And that's, I think, one of the big benefits of undulating periodization for the everyday athlete. If your goals are strength and power, you can have two strength days in one power day right now this week and match your program and the testing and the training that you're doing to your specific goals this week rather than having to do a strength phase and then a power phase. And then the last part that I wanted to address is how you actually add conditioning or endurance work to this. This won't be for everybody because I know some people just wanna focus on the weightlifting in the gym and they might go for a walk or something like that. But for someone like me who wants to compete in endurance sports, this is actually a pretty big priority. I'll show you one way that I like to do this, but this does change throughout the year. So one way to do this would be by adding a threshold conditioning session on Tuesday. For example, you'd be running near your 5K pace, often for around eight to 10 minutes on one to two minutes of rest. You might then add an interval day on Thursday. This would typically involve higher intensity intervals, around three to five minutes of work with three to five minutes of rest. Typically, I like to choose a challenging pace that's pretty hard to hit by the end of that three to five minutes. If you're wondering about how many intervals to do in one session, Typically, a total intervals training session volume would be around 20 to 40 minutes total. And then lastly, we have zone two cardio work that I like to program on Saturdays. This is focused on long, slow aerobic work. For example, 60 to 90 minutes of cycling or running. And I typically like to do this below 70% of maximum heart rate. As I said earlier though, this is just one example. And again, you can adapt this to your individual needs and you can change it throughout the year. All right, so after years of testing different methods and measuring progress with hundreds of clients, this undulating approach that we covered today is exactly how I approach periodization as an everyday athlete. I hope you learned some interesting science and training terminology today. And I hope you thought about how you can make this approach work for your individual goals. Whether you're training for a race, a lifting goal, or just to stay healthy, I hope this information helps you make the most of your training time and your effort and helps you hit your goals. Let me know in the comments what you're training for. Thanks so much for watching guys. Subscribe so I don't miss any future videos and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.